a little bit of salami mixed in. So is that just water? That's, yep, yeah, that's just water. And I'm applying this to help aid the absorption because you don't want the minute the mortar hits the brick, this is so dry that it'll absorb, you know, that moisture real, real fast. And that'll sort of slow everything down. Now when they get up here with the mortar, the first thing I'll do is I'm going to go over to the other side and I'm going to build my dams back here and over here so that nothing flows through. And again, this is not the exact way that we would go about this. This is sort of, typically we would want to have <clears throat> everything prepped out, everything kind of planned out, so we're doing sort of a step by step. You know, I've said earlier that I would start low because I don't want it to flow out. It doesn't appear to me that anything's going to flow down you know, the walls here, so it's kind of a, a safe spot that everybody can see, here, but it's not exactly what we would do. <laughs> And if you can, like if you have an exterior wall, add even more water into it to help flush it, that's great. That vacuum attachment works really good to get most of your dust out. But you really want to get this as clean as you can. And you can see that I don't have really any pooling on that brick. There's no water that's really running down the side other than when I sprayed here. And that's that brick sucking in all that water right there. So think of that in terms of if that mortar was there, what's that doing to our mortar? It's just drying it out. So we want to get that nice and wet. You see that? See that it just kind of a, it sucks it on in. A lot of times, um, I'm sure some of us have seen where you can take a, a brick and you put it in a bucket of water and it just bubble, bubble, bubbles and that's just absorbing all of that. We've actually done that in some projects where you're doing so much soaking that you've got to keep adding water to your buckets because the bricks are absorbing so much of that moisture. The water level keeps going down. That's getting pretty good. And again, I don't have it, I pointed it out earlier, but if you have a headlamp when you do work like this, you can really see what you're doing. It really helps a lot. You want it to glisten? Well, I want it to be at a point where, yeah, I guess you could see there's a little bit of a shine to it. I just don't want it to be dry you know, to the touch. This isn't going to hurt it. <coughs> what I'll do real quick, I'll sneak it by and I'm going to get the other side real quick. In a nutshell, to go over it again, one of the main things that we, you start off doing is you want to expose that what you're going after. In this case, we're trying to expose this crack. And using really basic tools, you can use a hammer, a little chisel thing, a knife, score your plaster, or use it like this, and just expose your crack, okay? If you find plaster that's not sound, like we did here, then take it off, because you're going to have to take it off for your plaster repair anyways. And over here in doing that, we kind of exposed more cracking. You know, it wasn't really as evident as it came down here. You can see it kind of followed the bond really nicely here. We kind of got into fractures where some of the bricks were actually broken. So that's that. After you've done that and exposed it, you can go ahead and start to do the prep work on it, which is basically just removing any of the loose mortar to start with. You know, something like this obviously has to go. So you're going to want to take that out. There's a number of tools you can use. You can use tucks. One of my favorite things to use, you might see me use, was this. And this is just a drill bit with a handle on it. And I like it because you can get far back in there, deep, deep into the wall. And that'll help clean that out. So you want to get all that loose material out. Another thing that helps is a vacuum. I like to use this vacuum with the hose attachment on it. OK? 
Okay, you just sort of make one of these up yourself. Get a length of two from Home Depot, a little bit of tape, and they sell these nozzles. And it's nice because you can get right back inside your wall, just like that. Obviously, we're kind of blessed and cursed at the same time with having a large crack here, but it does make it easier to get in there and Hello, clean friend. out. He's working on the Type 2 now. So okay. if you want to do your damming process. You got some stiff stuff on the edge. This is good. Is that good? Yeah. What's that? That is a Chinese restaurant. Yeah. <laughs> I do what I'm told. You have a pizza thing on the roof of your truck. That'll work. We'll try that. Sorry. I'm going to go to the other side real quick to get that dam built, and then I'll come back over here. <laughs> well, those of us who were here earlier and only want to see the injection, yes. Okay. But for everybody, I don't know. Well, well, casein's a uh, it's a it's a byproduct of milk. Uh, a lot of times when you get uh, your uh, muscle powders and whatnot, that that's casein, that's that protein um, in there to help you bulk up. Okay. The amazing thing about casein, when you mix it with lime, is that it will take even the stiffest mix and turn it into a liquid. Um, so what we've got here is a is a very uh, dry mortar. Uh, we need to fill up a void. We can't just add more water to it because if we do that, we're expanding that mix and then when it dries, it's going to shrink. You're still going to have voids in there. So we're going to add a little bit of casein to this and you'll see it's just going to turn into a soup. You know? and, uh, and, and then we can pour that or pump that into the walls. It'll flow through uh, uh, rather nicely and uh, be okay. Kind of drying times on it. Uh, it doesn't actually affect. Hold on, okay. <laughs> it doesn't actually affect the uh, the properties mm -hmm. of the lime, with the exception of the viscosity. Okay. It changes the viscosity. So this lime uh, gets uh, gets pretty tough after about eight hours. So, which is one of the nice things about hydraulic lime. I mean, you with hydraulic lime or with non-hydraulic limes, it can stay thumbprint hard for days. Uh, with the building lime 150, which is our moderately hydraulic uh, lime, uh, it's going to be thumbprint hard overnight. So, uh, and you're going to have much faster resistance to frost as well. For KC, is that something you sell, or is it just a regular item? We we do sell it, or we do have it. Um, we uh, we do pre-blended grouts, so all you have to do is add a small amount of water, and it does it for you. Um, but casein is also one of the special ingredients in our traditional lime washes that we make. Um, when when you take uh, just lime and water and make a lime wash, uh, you're looking at uh, anywhere from eight to ten coats, uh, and it uh, it's a little dusty. You'll uh, walk away with a, with a white hand or a white shirt um, with the uh, with the um, uh, casein in addition, it actually uh, uh, kind of solidifies the paint a bit, uh, so you can get away with two to three coats, and it has virtually no dusting at all. So I didn't know I was going to be talking about paint today. Well, just like a bonus for y'all. <laughs> Aren't y'all happy? I am. Okay. You can keep talking, Jeff. <laughs> Tim's doing a hell of a job. All right, cut the profanity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I grew up, again, I started going with Dad on uh, job sites when I was seven. I was cussing around them by the age of 11. Um, so, uh, yeah, things happen. Do you also have a cheese product? No, we, we don't make cheese. Uh, at, uh, but, but mate, with the, with the economy the way it is, I'm always open to options. So. I'm making stuff right now I never thought I'd, <laughs> I'd make, so. All right. All right. So basically we had two holes here that we've chosen. This one is more of a, a packing type situation. The other, you can see I've built the dam up some here, and that's going to allow me, I'm going to build it up a little bit more because I've got a very narrow diameter tube there, and we can press that right around into the back between those two bricks there. So while the material is coming up, I'm just going to go ahead and just keep packing this hole. And I'll, this. Um, yeah, yep. um, why don't you work out the other bucket and I'll use that one for uh, adding the casing. Okay. This one, casing? Yeah, okay. since I'll have a little more working room. And do you mind if I use 
No. It's very fast. You can actually oh. use... Um, Do you have a margin tray? There should be. Coolest workshop y'all have ever been to in your life. I mean, yes. it's pretty darn great. So open the you want a, um, there should be a mixing pan right there. Oh, that might help you. Yeah. yeah, that'd be great, I think. Perfect. Child proof. Yeah, Jeff proof. <laughs> I'm help. used to closing up, but it's not opening. <laughs> I'd help if I got gloves on. You know, that's why they make those little holes and take a knife and slice Well, them. yeah, I don't have a knife. <laughs> Well, see, this is like product development here, Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> All right, look at here. It smells bad. That's okay. No, I. <laughs> it's kind of got a little cheesy odor to it. There you go. Usually, you've got a water bucket. Mm -hmm. Is there water in this bucket? Okay, clean water right there in a bigger pan um, if you want to. Yeah, I'm just want. Not if I use your sponge. Nope. Just want a little bit of extra water in there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's what I thought. I put way too much water in there. Okay. You got a trash bucket? <laughs> <laughs> Here, this is what we're going to do. <laughs> Add a little mud. Yeah. Oh, I, I took that way too far. Okay, let's see what happens. So y'all can see how dry and crumbly mm -hmm. this mix is. So we're going to add our special cheese dust. Oh, I switched it inside out, Jimmy. You're good. Hey, okay, come here and take a look because I don't do casing grounds very often. Okay. Good? Yes? No? Let me try the... Well, everything else that we've shown you today is really cool. Uh, <laughs> this will be really cool when we have some uh, some RPMs behind it. Or any questions? <laughs> He's filling those gaps in quite a lot. Is that just because we're going to show the normal case of putting in a liquid type solution? That, that's correct. I mean, this these types of uh, cracks like this, the way I would probably approach it is uh, is more like just putting mortar in here. Now, one thing that we'd want to do is maybe find some uh, brick slivers and kind of work in there as well, so we don't have a huge body of of mortar in there. And you want to kind of keep the uh, uh, um, the amount of of mortar in the hole uh, uh, relatively small. Um, but in a normal case, you'd you'd have a, a smaller void. Uh, you you dam that up, let that set up a bit, um, get get nice and kind of tough, and then you could just pour and, and work the grout in that way. When you say dam it up, are you saying just to build it up so that you have less of the liquid going in? Or, 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 or uh, less of the liquid uh, to come out, come out, squirting out, yeah. Yeah, basically just have enough void uh, that you can fit whatever attachment he's going to use. Um, yeah, the syringe there so that you can just kind of work that in and then pump so and i mean you know this is a great way for a, a do-it-yourselfer or for a small jobs other times you're going to be like looking at equipment like grout hogs and whatnot to pump a lot of material in the wall so so the assumption is that they're just massive voids behind that that's correct yeah there's been separation between the 
the, the layers. And I mean, you can, you can see daylight through the wall, so there's a good chance that's going on behind the plaster. Uh, and, and, and these types of grouts uh, can actually work well too when you have uh, delamination of the plaster from the substrate. If you need to just fill it in you know, with a little something and you've got a crack, you can work a, a syringe with like a needle or a very fine hose into that and then pump it uh, that way. Hooray! We have half of a solution. Yeah. So this still, even though we've added water to it, it has an extremely low water content, um, you know, in relation to mortar. And uh, so we're going to be able to pour this in, and as the water evaporates out, you're not going to have nearly the amount of shrinkage as if we just tried mortar and water. Okay? So, what do you want to do? We're waiting for microspheres. <laughs> oh, are you still waiting for the yeah. DM? Come, let me go check on the type. Yeah. yeah, check on the type two. Ed should have had that made up. Or I hope he wasn't waiting for me to come back and tell him how much water to add to it. He was looking for cleaning it out. I'm not sure. Okay. Because I said I was running this up here and then I had to start talking. Is it we're waiting on? Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a type of grout. That's an excellent question. A wonderful way to uh, fill you all in uh, in the period of time that we have uh, to wait. It's our uh, <laughs> deep <laughs> breath. <laughs> deep <laughs> breath. Um, it's, uh, it's what we call our type 2 grout. Uh, what it is, it's a premix of uh, lime, uh, casein, uh, and microspheres. Now, microspheres are little ceramic glass beads, or ceramic beads, rather, um, that are filled with air. So when you use that as an aggregate to help take up the shrinkage, it doesn't separate. So with this, I mean, we've got a soup, and it's a soup comprised of lime casein and sand. The sand's heavy, so after a little period of time, the sand's going to go to the bottom, the lime's going to come to the top. With the type 2 grout, with those microspheres, it stays in solution, so you don't have to worry about stirring it up every five minutes. Okay. So why do you make the choice between the two? Uh, it really depends on the, uh, the size of crack that you're dealing with. The, uh, the type 2 grout is exceptionally fine. I mean, he'll be able to, he can, he can put it through this syringe, um, but he could also, if he had e an even smaller bit of tubing or, or even like a needle, that type 2 grout would, would go through that. Um, and really for this type of void, we could, we could be using that if we had different <coughs> equipment. Um, because, but, yeah. Actually, it might still flow through, but What's that? Uh, the, that stuff might actually go through this, but we don't want to dirty it up. i got three more. Do <coughs> you want to try it? Try it. Yeah, okay. Kill some time. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. I like the way you think. <laughs> ah, that, that's even better than me trying to. Turn. Looks delicious. Just make it dust of a nuts. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Because Jimmy wants that. Yeah. 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 You can see it flowing right now. Mm -hmm. whoop, whoop, whoop. So up. Everybody watch this. Everybody be very quiet. How much working time do you have? Uh, four to six hours. Yeah. So we'll stay liquid that long. Is it, is it going? It's tough. It's going. Okay. Yeah. It's not easy. So that was done. Yeah, if I had made the mix wetter and then added the casein, it would have probably gone to soup. There, went through. Success! And now we know why we have a bucket of water, because we want to keep things clean in between that, so we don't get that drying effect on the inside. Yep. You know, you're done with this now, aren't yeah. you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Question is, are you done with that? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs>
type two will be real nice. Is type two prepared the same way? It is, it is. Which, what we basically do is, we do four different types of grouts. Um, we do basically a, a very fine, uh, what, what we basically just made here is very similar to our type four grout, um, which is a, a relatively coarse sand lime and casing. Uh, we do a type three grout that's our lime casing and a fine sand, almost like a, a finished plaster type sand. Uh, fine silica. The type 2 we're, which we're bringing up is the microspheres lime and casing. And then we do just a simple lime casing grout uh, with no aggregate whatsoever. Um, that's really for if you have very small micro cracks that you're just trying to stitch stuff back together. Um, and then of course that stuff can be used on very big voids. Is this principally for interior <coughs> solutions or exterior as well? Wherever you have a void. So you can work on it. Most of your voids are going to be inside the wall fabric. So, But you can certainly work with it on the exterior if that's where your access uh, to the void is. The dam works. The dam works. <laughs> Not a lot of material back there. <laughs> Isn't this brilliant? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this material, you're not actually using it as a pointing material. No. This is, this is if, if you've got separation of, of wides of brick, gotcha. um, or, or for some reason you've got a hole back there that you've got to fill up. So it's this to is restore the structural integrity of the wall, Precisely. and then you go back to your standard grout or and your standard mortars for cosmetic. That's correct. Okay. okay. So yeah, yeah, it's helping tie everything together. I mean, if, if this work had been done, uh, let's say we were dealing with a wall that didn't have an earthquake <laughs> affect it, um, and, and you had uh, pointed it with Portland cement, and you're afraid that within the wall fabric you've had lime leach and you've had, uh, you know, mortar rot going on, you could use these grouts to kind of fill in that, that back work. Okay. Was, was the wall meant to be solid? Or was, was it purposely set up for some voids? Oh, no, 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 it should be solid. Should because be solid the, the whole way that these, these historic buildings work, and uh, I was talking to um, uh, Mark Vaughn, who's not in the room right now, uh, earlier about this, is that, uh, I mean, every, every mortar joint here is a, is a control joint. It's, it's a, uh, um, a, a flex, a, Expansion. Sort of expansion, thank you. Expansion and contraction joint. I'm tired, my feet hurt. Um, uh, so, so basically the way these walls are put together, it's almost like a basket weave. They're exceptionally strong walls. And because you've got a uh, soft, flexible mortar, everything's working together. Versus in a, a modern building, you've got hard bricks and hard mortars. Everything's kind of working against each other because they've got different uh, thermal uh, coefficients and whatnot. So, so, I mean, but solid, too. But it's solid, too, yeah. Solid, right? mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, most modern construction bricks are facade, not a structural. Oh, that's right, that's right, yeah, yeah. No one's using brick for structural work anymore. Was that, is that an earthquake crack that, crack that I understand? Uh, I, I, uh, is Mitch still in here? No. Yes, I think it is. Okay. Okay. So yes. like when you have that, I mean, it could be anything, like it could be just a foundation subsidence. Settling or, settling or anything. Yeah, yeah. This is just a handy trick for if you've got void in a wall, a way to fill it up without adding a bunch of water to your mix, which is going to cause shrinkage, which is still going to leave some void in there. So this is a way of taking your lime mortar and treating it like the big <coughs> professional grout power grouts, injections mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. things. Okay. Yeah. Cool. yeah. <coughs> Y'all have that in the mix and go type bag? We do. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is add water. A small amount of water. <laughs> okay, I will hold this. Uh, and where'd I put that? Or, you want to use that? This one? Okay. I could start pouring out. Sorry, that's all right. That, that was I got cleaner than I thought it was going to be. So 
the stinking fingers over here. <laughs> Don't you want me to hold it while you wrench their hands? Or? No, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I was expecting you to tell me when. So does this have the same setup time? Yeah, yeah, it's still looking four to six hours. Is the, is the Type 2 grout a faster set than the regular casing grouts? Still looking four to six hours? Yeah. And you can use any kind of apparatus. You can use a Bags, you can use uh, you want more mostly virus and things like that. Yeah, they could still be point. Big thing. Don't make a mess. Okay, good. Of us standing here. I can edit this down to 10 minutes. You should cut out all of the grouting and just have us standing here looking around. Rub a hole. Rub a bag. Go. <laughs> you have to clean. You have to clean that out each time. Well, it's recommended. Recommended. Yeah. Usually, you're using something a little bit bigger. This stuff tends to flow really, really well. So it's sort of one of those deals. I think where as long as you're keeping it wet and continually using it, it's not going to dry as much. But you just want to make sure that you know. And what we typically will do, like I think you saw some of it with that piece of wire, hmm. we always keep something that we can fit through our tube to clean out if we get in a jam tube, just have that on hand and we're good.